Are you looking for some easy and quick ways to stock your freezers with leftovers from dinner? Well, that's what I got here and I'm loading up my freezer and I'll show you how it's done. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be loading up my freezer with some quick and easy meals that I'm making just with leftover food that I have around the house. There are a lot of different ways to stock up your freezer. You can make a bunch of meals at once and load it up, but my particular way that I tend to do it is to make doubles of food or to take leftovers and transform it into some kind of casserole that can later go into the freezer. So that's what I'm gonna be doing throughout this video. I'm either gonna be taking leftovers and transforming them into something new for my freezer, or we're gonna be making a bunch of batch meals. For example, frozen scrambled egg pouches that are perfect to take camping with you, and they take up little to no space in your freezer. So let's get into it, and I'll show you how I make quick and easy freezer meals for my family. For this freezer meal, I have some leftover French toast batter, as well as some apples from my morning French toast that didn't get printed. We had all that leftover. Now this is croissants. Whenever we get these and we don't quite finish the whole thing and they might be getting a little stale, I go ahead and break them up and put them in a freezer bag in my freezer to save them for any kind of breakfast casserole we may need. And then here's a bit of the cinnamon bread that I had that kind of broke off. So I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm pouring my extra maple syrup apple mixture on here, trying to spread it out. There we go. Then let's pour this over it. Just gonna kind of push this down. And then we are just going to put this right in the freezer and then we'll bake it whenever we need some breakfast. All right, and then I'm gonna write apple, croissant, breakfast, bake. And we'll do at 375, probably for one hour. Raw first. And then the month for dash 24. We're gonna go ahead and double wrap it like I do with anything I'm putting in the freezer. It's pretty much the only time I use saran wrap. And there we go. One breakfast casserole for the freezer. For my next freezer meal, I'm going to be using up some of my extra eggs and making some scrambles for the freezer. So I'm going to go ahead and label it with the different meats I have. I have some bacon and I have sausage. Now how I roll this is I take the top and I kind of tuck it in itself as I go down. That makes the top of the inside on the outside. So that way if you're pouring something liquid in there, it won't get in the top of the bag and ruin the seal. I'm going to be putting in a dozen eggs per bag. So I'm going to get those whipped up and scrambled. I do like to add a little bit of water to my scrambled eggs because I feel like it helps steam them when they're cooking. So I'm going to go ahead and add the water at this point. And then I'm going to add the bacon. I was going to add it directly to the mix, but then I decided, you know what, it would be easier just to add stuff straight to the bag. So I poured it in the bag. I had the bag in another measuring cup to keep it from falling over. And then I'm going to scoop the bacon directly into the bag where I just poured the eggs. Now I'm going to be using some freeze dried red onions as well as peppers. Usually when you're trying to use from your preserves, you don't want to put a dirty measuring spoon into the jar. My plan is to use up all of these onions and peppers. So I'm not worried about that at this moment. You could add seasonings at this point or just whatever you want to add in here as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and just give this a good jiggle and try and get it mixed up. I'm going to be using my new Wevac Chamber Vacuum. This is a little different than a regular vacuum sealer as it can do liquids. I haven't tried it though with the liquids, so this will be a fun little experiment. I'm making sure that the bag is nice and flat before I close the lid. Now the whole point of this is that it sucks out all the air and that's what keeps it from getting freezer burnt in the freezer. 
However, it took a little bit of practice. This first round did not go so well. It just ended up everywhere and it was all in the top of the seals. So this bag is no good. 42 paper towels later, we got a clean vacuum chamber. So I'm gonna try this again. I put it in a new bag so it had less in it. So I wanted to see if that worked, but I really didn't change anything else besides having it in a different bag. And as you could see, the egg still got sucked up to the seal. So it's not gonna have a good seal. So this did not work out either. So my next plan is to make my own bag and get it super big. So this one, I used the big roll and I shaped my own bag instead of using the pre-cut ones. And I just am trying to make sure that it's nice and flat so it doesn't have a crease in the seal when it heats up. And this worked pretty well, but I just don't like how big of a bag it is. I feel like it still has a lot of gaps and airspace and it wasted a lot of plastic just having it that big and not needed that much space so i still want to come up with another way to get this torque and then i remembered that you can have it as a light suck so i know that sounds weird bad but you can do it where it doesn't it doesn't crush everything so you can do it for fruits and veggies so i decided to give that a try i only had it in there for 10 seconds and it worked amazing that's exactly what it needed was to have a light suction on that and that worked fantastic so this was my second one i also like to do a flip test just to make sure that the seal is nice and good and i went ahead and made six of them so i used up six dozen eggs and then some bacon and some sausage that i had cooked up plus some freeze-dried peppers and onions so it was a good way for me to get some of my stock rotated and now i have these in the freezer ready to go perfect for a busy day or to go camping with I want to show you guys how I put up pancakes as well for the freezer. Whenever they have cooled down completely, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the bag. I usually do Ziploc gallon bags, but since I got this new vacuum sealer that does it at a light suction, I'm going to try it to store the pancakes in the freezer. That way they can last a little longer. And I make batches of pancakes a lot. So this way I can have these more for long-term storage than for short-term storage. It's funny, I got half the crew likes chocolate chips, the other half likes some kind of sprinkles. So I always do a variety. So I'm going to put this in my chamber vac and I'm going to have the suction set for 10. That seems to work very well. Sometimes the 5 is good for if you want a little bit of air in there. But the 10 setting works really great for items like pancakes. So this is going in my freezer. I'm going to make some dinner meals now for my freezer. I got this seasoned chicken meat from the food bank it's supposed to be taco seasoned so i defrosted it it had a lot of water in there after it thawed so i'm just going to squeeze some of that out and get that out of there and then we're going to put the rest of the taco meat in here it wasn't bad it kind of had a little bit of a funky texture but that was probably just from being frozen so i'm going to crush it all up to get it back to the ground consistency and then i made a bunch of spanish rice like a big pot of it so that was kind of my inspiration to get this used up was all the spanish rice I'm going to have some refried beans and then I have these giant burrito wrappers. So I'm just going to make some chicken taco wraps for the freezer. And that way it's easy to throw one in husband's lunch and it's thawed by the time he needs to heat it up. So I'm just going to be putting a layer of refried beans. I just got them straight from the can, but you can season them if you would like. And then I'm putting a good scoop of this Spanish rice on there and then some of this chicken taco meat. I wasn't quite sure how this would taste if it had enough seasoning, but I figured mixed in with the Spanish rice and the beans that it would go okay. Once I got a good layer of the chicken taco meat on there, I'm going to sprinkle some canned corn. I think that would add a good nice crunch to it. And then I have some mozzarella cheese that I'm looking to get used up. So I'm going to put a little bit of that on there. And then just sprinkle up some freeze-dried cilantro just for a little bit of extra flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and try and roll this now. I realized that I probably overstuffed her a little bit because it's a little hard to roll. So that's okay. We'll just take that into consideration the next time you, I'm going to make another one. I'm going to slim back a little bit on some of the ingredients to make sure that I'm able to roll it pretty nice. And I don't want it too stuffed, you know. You want it filling but not too stuffed. So I'm going to go ahead and do another round. This time I did a little bit thinner on the beans. I did less rice. We're going to do less meat. I'm kind of going to trim the sides of how much filling I put in and just kind of put them in the center. So I used the same ingredients that I had just to try and use it up. I did that last of that mozzarella cheese. 
So then this time when I'm able to roll it, it's actually able to close. I'm going to keep that going until I've used up all of my ingredients. And then what I'm going to do to get these all stored for the freezer is I'm going to wrap them in saran wrap. This is a big roll that I have gotten from work when I worked at Applebee's. They let me buy one, but they sell these at like restaurant supply stores. But I'm going to wrap them really well in saran wrap. And then in addition to that, I'm going to put it in a gallon size Ziploc bag with what it is and the date on there. So that way I'm able to pull out just one at a time and I don't have to thaw the whole thing, but it's still labeled. So that way I can have it and I can throw it in husband's lunch and it's ready to go. Now I did have a couple of those ingredients left over when I ran out of tortillas. I have some of these small street taco tortillas. I have a little bit of the corn left, some refried beans. I have a can of enchilada sauce that I wanna get used up. So I'm going to make an enchilada casserole and this is strictly for me to put into the freezer as a backup meal. I like to do that if I have an abundance of ingredients in the fridge, if I make a bunch of meat or something and I need to get it used up, I'm just going to make some kind of random casserole, throw it in the freezer, and then we'll bake it later. I'm going to spread some of the refried beans onto the tortillas. I opened up a can of Amy's and oof, those are so much better. Look at the flavor in those versus just a regular can of refried beans. And then I'm going to pour a little bit of the enchilada sauce on the bottom just to start getting it layered and coated. And then I'm going to do a layer of the tortillas with the refried beans. And then I'm doing a little extra blotches of that good flavored refried beans around just to make sure that I have a good bean ratio because I have a lot of that and not quite as much meat left. So then I'm going to sprinkle some of the Spanish rice on top of it. I still had a lot of this left. This was a big family size restaurant box that I got from the food bank. So I cooked it all at one time and it made a very large amount. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some of the ground taco meat on there and then I'm going to use some of the corn that's in that can and then I'm just going to drizzle some of the enchilada sauce across. Um, I don't want to use too much. This is the only can I have so I'm going to try and stretch it out amongst all of it and then I'm going to do another layer of those tortillas. I like that I'm able to kind of break them up to make sure that it's an even layer without having to overlap it and then I'm going to put the refried beans on there another layer and then some more of the Spanish rice. It's just mostly rice and beans because that's what I have a lot of and I'm trying to get used up. And those are good flavors and good protein. So then I'm going to add the last bit of my ground chicken here. It wasn't too much. I think that was a two pound bag. So it's kind of nice that I was able to stretch that meat into a bunch of burritos as well as this casserole. So I'm gonna use the last of the corn. I decided not to open up another can because I'm so close to the end of it here. And then I would have a lot of corn left over. So I'm scooping out the last bit of the beans and put that in there. And then I'm gonna drizzle some more enchilada sauce. And then I'm gonna do one last layer of tortillas. This is gonna be the final layer. I'm also gonna pour the last of that enchilada sauce all the way to the top and make sure it's coated. And then I'm gonna put some more uh, freeze-dried cilantro on there because I have to use up and why not? So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this in foil and I'm gonna write the instructions on the foil of how to cook it and what it needs. So I'm writing it, I labeled it an enchilada casserole because that's kind of what it was. And then I'm going to write the month and the year on it. And then I'm going to write the temperature, how long. And then I also wrote that it needs cheese. Oh, well, Betty Jan wanted to jump in and write. So she's writing that it needs cheese because I ran out of cheese, but I still had all those ingredients. So that way I know whenever I take it out that I'm going to bake it for a little bit. And then when it's done, I'll throw the cheese on top of it. That's a good way for you to make up something, even if you don't have all the ingredients for it, you just write and keep notes of what you need and that's something that you can always finish later. So keep that in mind and don't let not having a finishing ingredient like cheese stop you from putting together a freezer meal. So now when I wrap this, I'm gonna put a big long layer down and put the casserole pan on top of it. And then you're going to pull the saran wrap up, put the other half over it, and then tuck the sides around the side of it. Then you're gonna do that one more time. You're gonna pull your saran wrap out and then you're gonna rotate your casserole and put it the other way and do the same kind of technique. You're going to pull the saran wrap over the top of it and then from the back of it, pull it forward, tuck it around, and then that's nice and secure, ready to go for your freezer. For this next freezer casserole, I'm gonna have some tomato sauce that I made out of some sliced tomatoes and I need to get it used up. So I decided to use it as a base to cook some chicken breast in. 
I'm just gonna throw this in the crock pot and let this cook all day long. This is one of the things that really helps me is to have a protein cooked already, especially having four giant breasts like this. It's about probably about four pounds. So I can use it for a certain meal. And then I'll also have a bunch of leftover chicken that I can incorporate in several different types of meals. I'm gonna have this on low for eight hours. And then whenever that's done, I'm going to shred my chicken and then I'm using the sauce that cooked down as my marinara sauce. I just doctored it up to kind of taste like a spaghetti sauce. I cooked some rigatoni and I have that in there. I like rigatonis for casseroles because I like that the whole is nice and big and it can absorb a lot of the sauce. And then we're gonna throw our shredded chicken on there. And then I have some of these mozzarella balls that has like this soft cream center. So I'm gonna break those up and use those kind of as a mozzarella on top. I like fresh mozzarella and I need to get this used up and I don't quite know how to use these yet. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just make a casserole out of them. So that's what I'm doing is just kind of breaking them apart with my hands and putting them in a layer on top. And then I just have a smidgen of mozzarella cheese left. So I'm going to spread that on top. And that's all I'm gonna have for this casserole. I went ahead and wrapped it up like I did before with the foil and then the double saran wrap. For my next freezer meal, I have some leftover cooked meatballs that I did. I did one of my frugal Fridays and I found this pork really cheap. So I went ahead and made some meatballs. Now that I have leftovers, I'm once again just going to chamber vac them. I'm absolutely in love with this thing. It's just so addicting watching all the air release from it. So these are packed and ready to go for my freezer for a nice, quick, easy dinner. And then speaking of easy dinners, I had three pounds of hamburger, so I cooked it all and seasoned it all taco flavored. Then we used a pound of it tonight for tacos, and these two are going in the freezer. Pre-cooked, ready to go for a fast and easy meal. Hello everybody, thank you so much for coming along and seeing how I like to stock up my freezer. What are some tips that you have to stock your freezer for some quick and easy meals? Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll catch you next time on Mama Bears.